Hey everybody, it's Jury's Doctor, and today I'm going to be covering a topic I should have covered a long time ago, and that is how to join a corporation in EVE Online. Now, there's a number of things that you need to understand about joining corporations in EVE, and I will talk first about the mechanics of how corporations work and how alliances work and what the actual steps of joining a corporation are. And then I will discuss the more important part, which is how you actually join a corporation and become a social and active member of your corporation as a contributing player. So joining corporations has been made a little bit easier by EVE Online uh, and by the developers at CCP. Uh, in the sense that when the agency starts, and it starts for most people on login, so you have this checkbox down here at the bottom of the agency window that you can uncheck if you don't want to see this every time you log in, but they have made the corporation dashboard the biggest pinned item on the agency home menu. Now, if you don't see this when you log in, if you've already dismissed that, one of the things that you can do is go up to your Neocom and actually on your Neocom shortcuts, basically think of this as like the taskbar in your windows, uh, or uh, the dock on your Apple, you'll find that the agency should be pinned right at the top. And when you click that, it'll open it back up. If you need to find it, you can also go into your Neocom, go to activities, you'll notice the activities logo is the agency logo, and the agency will be the first item in the list. If you wanna add the agency as a shortcut, you can right click on the agency and say add shortcut, and it'll put it on your taskbar there. Now, the corporation dashboard um, hasn't functionally changed in a significant way in the last five or six years. And um, when I open my agency dashboard, it will start by showing you, and sometimes this information is curated and it's kept up to date, and sometimes it's not. Um, but it will typically open with your corporation dashboard or your homepage, uh, bulletins, details, um, kill reports. So if you want to see what the activity is for your corporation without going to Z kill in terms of kills and activity in space, uh, you can go to kill reports and you can show kills and show losses uh, in the same way that you can show your own kills and your own losses by looking at your character sheet. Now, uh, I'm a member of Iron Guard, uh, formerly the monolithic corporation existing in Iron Armada. Iron Guard has joined Nulsechnish Lupin. So if I click on show info for Iron Guard, it's going to say member of Nulsech. And if I click on the Alliance logo for the Alliance information, it will pull up the details uh, of that Alliance. Now, what is the relationship of players to corporations and corporations to alliances and alliances to coalitions? Well, uh, the first two corporations and alliances are formalized within the game code. They're able to do certain things. They're able to, um, act and hold sov in terms of sovereign null such space. They're able to um, deploy structures, uh, have corporate wallets and alliance wallets, uh, set up corporate and alliance contracts. There's a number of interactions, uh, both from a gameplay level, a taxation level, an economic level, um, and, and, and certainly from a political level that uh, are enabled by the game systems to do things like have corporate standings, war histories, show member corporations, and so on. Uh, how the corporation functions is that much like any other MMO, it's a way to represent the relationship and the cooperation between players in a common goal or several common goals. Um, for those of you who aren't already in a corporation, what you're going to be interested in, what you should see is your default window when you open the corporation window is the recruitment uh, tab. And this recruitment tab is really what you're, what you're interested in. This is where I'm going to focus on um, showing you how to navigate. So as a new player, um, if you are looking to join a corporation, by default, all of these selection boxes will be Will be chosen so it will keep the selection of uh, activities to look for wide open and you can actually filter these lists to show you uh, by playtime by member count by certain exclusions and choices of activities 
all of the corporate adverts uh, that are currently out there to be seen by players. And a corporate advert is uh, it's a it's a single single source document that allows you to show what a certain corporation is currently looking for. And if they're keeping these up to date, you should be able to find them. Now you can search for a specific corporation. For example, I've looked for iron.guard and that is the corporation to which I belong. We are a PVP corporation. And uh, you can see here, no active adverts were found for the corporation Iron Guard. Double click on the entry below to see more details about them. So this is gonna open up our corporate uh, information page for Iron Guard, but it's not gonna show a corporate advert because we don't have one posted. Now, if a corporation has an advert up, and I'll, I'll look at Eve University as an example of this, um, when you open up Eve University, there's a few people who've put the words Eve and University in their name, um, probably hoping to build on the success of Eve University. You'll find that this one here, Eve University with the black um, gull in it, is the one that you want. And another way to find Eve University and know that you have the correct one is to search for them by alliance name. And that alliance name is Ivy League. So if you open alliances, you'll see that there's an Ivy League alliance. It has this logo, which believe it or not, I contributed to the design of. And when you go to members, you should see Eve University as a corporation in the list of corporations. So it is this one here, Eve University. Now, if we wanted to see the Eve University advert, I can search for that. And you can see that they actually have three adverts up. It looks like they're probably copies of the same one and that they've never curated this list or not in recent time. Um, but when you when you view the corporate description, you can see, you know, you can read quite a bit more about Eve University and they are Eve's premier teaching organization, uh, successfully teaching players since 2004. In fact, Eve University is so successful that at one point in time, a CCP devs were recorded as, as saying that um, in the days before we had free to play, you had a two or three week free trial during which you could play after which you had to start paying for the game subscription. And it was found that something like 97% of players who, who joined Eve University were likely to subscribe to the game. They were that effective and they've remained extremely effective at teaching new players. Um, so that's part of the reason I joined them and a significant part of the reason why I taught with them for a couple of years. Now, if you want to see the corporate adverts that tell you a little bit more about what they're looking for um, from the game perspective, when you're searching recruitment, here's a really good example of a well done corporate ad. So it's going to tell you areas of operation. They work in high sec, low sec, null sec, and wormhole space. They have campuses in each of these areas. They do small scale gangs. They do trade and mining. There's no minimum skill point requirement to join them. They communicate primarily in English, and they have two major time zones, uh, which here basically is 24 hours a day, which is kind of uh, kind of misleading because the game's only ever active for something like 23 and a half hours a day. There's typically a half hour downtime each day. And then friendly fire being legal means that they are free to shoot at one another within their own alliance to enable them to do things like practice combat and practice um, learning different uh, principles of how the gameplay functions and game mechanics work. Um, if you see friendly fire illegal, it means that if you shoot another corporation member while you're in high sec, that Concord will respond and kill you for it. Um, so most of the corporations in the game will have friendly fire set to legal just to avoid mistakes with new bros uh, and to allow for other things like testing fits and those kinds of things in a way that will not cause uh, problems for players who are unfamiliar with the game mechanics. And they have a detailed description talking about what it is that they're looking for, what the membership benefits include, um, if they have a skill book reimbursement program or if they provide replacement ships, uh, where they're located, the activities that they enjoy doing. And I'm willing to bet that these are one for one copies of the same thing. Uh, minor variations. So this one says looking for small gangs, trade and mining. This one says new, pl new pilot friendly, but it looks like exactly the same corporate description and text has been repeated a couple of times. 
yeah, looking for exploration, mission running, incursion. To be honest, Eve University does everything in the game, and I'm guessing that these three separate ads have been added because they needed to appeal to each of these checkboxes, and I think you can have a maximum of three... Yeah, maximum of three looking fours chosen. So they probably listed these three ads just to cover all of the bases. Um, so if I was going to set up a corporate ad for my alliance or my corporation, and I wanted to say, what are we looking for in terms of new players? It would allow me to choose a maximum of three, um, uh, three activities that are looking for. Now you can click to apply just by mousing over the right hand side here. Uh, and you can also apply to join directly from their, uh, from their info window. Now, they actually, and, and some corporations will do this, will say, we are always happy to accept new students. Click here for further information about the application process. Uh, another reason why Eve University is quite good is because they follow a lot of the same application processes as some of the larger NullSec blocks and larger organizations in the game. And they actually have a whole intake process where they will interview you, they get you into a queue of applicants, they have onboarding staff who go through and interview all the new applicants and, and check them to make sure that they're actually there to learn and that they're not, you know, misrepresenting themselves. Um, there's a process under which once you get approved, you're given roles, they'll provide you with new information. There's a welcome letter that tells you where to go. Um, all of these processes have been set up by them and curated over the last nearly two decades. Um, to help new players be as effective as possible when they're playing the game for the first time. And you can actually filter this list of corporations to see, you know, who else can you join? Who else is out there? Now, the, what you'll see here in the actual output window based on your search criteria is first the corporation icon, and then if they're a member of an alliance, then there will be an alliance logo here. So for example, uh, Bowsy Euro is uh, a US AUTZ group and they are a member of fraternity. Um, if you scroll down here a little bit further, you'll see Octavius Arms and they're a member of what could possibly go wrong. There's Dreadit and Dreadit is a member of Test Alliance, please ignore, but Dreadit is famously a group that has very heavily drawn their player base from people on Reddit, hence the name. Now, if you wanted to search to find a corporation that aligns more closely with your time of play, meaning the time, time of day and eve time that you're online. So presently, it's Sunday, the 6th of December for me. And presently, it is uh, 2028 eve time, which is UTC. And uh, 2028. So if I wanted to say I play every day. Now I'm in I'm in the west coast of Canada, so I'm in British Columbia. So I'm Pacific time. So for me, it is very rare that I'm online uh, between. And this is saying my local time. So it's very very rare that I'm online before um, a 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this, you know, to here. So we're going to say 0100 eve time to 0800 eve time is when I'm typically playing. And I can say that I want to join a corporation which has, say, f between 50 and 100 people. Let's say that's the area that I'm looking. I want to play in a group where there's enough people for us to do some fleet ops get on, on combat fleets or do some fleet mining. Uh, maybe I even want to go bigger than that. Maybe I want to I want to go 100 to 200 players. I want to have enough people that I can fly with, or 50 to 200. I want to have enough people that I can fly with and, and get on regular fleets and do some larger content uh, where they've got enough people that they can justify having some infrastructure, like some structures and some IHOBs for improving their space. And um, I'm going to play in this time and I'm going to say, I want to fly with people who speak English and maybe French. Maybe I want to include French in there because I'm Canadian and uh, I speak French as well. 
Now, if I wanted to eliminate French or if I wanted to add German, Russian, Spanish, or Japanese, uh, wait, is Spanish in there? Yes, Spanish is in there. I can add those other selectors. Now, uh, let's say I only wanted to live in NullSec. So I can eliminate these other areas of space and I can say, well, let's say I'm interested in mission running, but not exploration or incursion. I'm interested in PVP, but not bounty hunting and not piracy. Well, let's say piracy, but not faction warfare. I'm interested in trade and industry and I'm not interested in role play, but I am interested in new player friendly. So I'm not a role player, but let's say these are the, the things I want. I want to make some money doing mission running. I want to do some alliance warfare, piracy and small gang stuff. I want to do trade and building. And I want to be in a, in a corporation that's new pilot friendly in my time zone. And I want to be in null sec. So this has me sorted by player count in terms of corporation size, the play times when I'm active, uh, English speaking in null sec with those activities that I previously covered. Now, if I wanted to exclude corporations and alliances, this will show me only corporations that are standalone. They're not a part of a large organization. So in the same way that a player can join a corporation, a corporation can join an alliance and they bring all their members with them. Now by excluding corporations and alliances, I am able to see corporations that are not currently part of a bigger group, uh, at least not formally, uh, and which are, you know, interested in the activities that I'm interested in, in certain times of day. And you'll notice here that there's this group called Ribka or Ribka, and Ribka is actually a new, new, uh, a new player friendly group that I am helping to mentor uh, with members of uh, NSH and RIBA, which is uh, another one of the, the groups that we fly with. So this is our um, this is our you know day zero Nubro Corp. If you've never done anything before and you want to learn to to fly, you can join RIBCA. Um, and this is the group where we like to train new players. But this is one example. There's lots of other ones here to join. So if you were interested in these time zones, um, English speaking, doing PVP and MULSEC and industry, there's lots out there that you can look to. And here on the right hand side, it will show you quality of match based on the search criteria that you've chosen. Um, and really the difference between these groups is in, in, in a large way going to be uh, down to what are you looking for? And what are you interested in doing? And the the fun thing with this is that their basic description, looking for casual players, uh, wormhole corporation, PV capsuleers, um, living in JSpace means wormhole space. You know, there's lots of opportunities here. There's people that are interested strictly in mining. This is a new player mining corp. Um, this will give you at least an entry guideline to start making introductions to people and say, hey, I'm interested in joining your group. Um, what I would encourage you to do, rather than simply clicking apply to the first corporation you find, is to right click on the header. So right click on the name of the group and go corporation show info. And the reason for that is that if you look at the attributes, it should tell you the name of the CEO and founder. I would actually send that person an email so you can right click on their name and say, send message. It'll pop open a new mail message. I would actually send them an email first to say here, I'm a new player. Here's my situation. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about your group? And are you still accepting new players? And just make it a conversation. If they don't get back to you and you don't get an answer within say 24 hours, um, or even 48 hours if you're if you're very casual, um, don't apply. Because if you're sending the CEO or the recruitment officer um, messages and they're not getting back to you, that tells you a little bit about the type of support that you're going to get from the corporation. Anybody in the game can make a recruitment ad. Anyone. Anyone in the corporation can make a recruitment ad. Um, but 
whether or not they respond to you, whether or not they're timely, whether or not they're welcoming and supportive are very different things. And you want to make sure that whoever you're joining is a good fit for you, for your play style, for your um, gameplay, for the time that you'll be playing, and that they're communicative. So this is how you join a corporation. Once you actually click apply to join, what will happen is that you'll get a message saying your application's been submitted. Now, if you are a um, if you're a recruitment officer, which this character is not, um, there will be a recruitment panel that you can see applications that have come in, um, and you'll be able to see who are current members, who's a prospective member, and there'll be a notification that'll pop up in your notification bell here that will tell you so-and-so has applied to join the corporation. Once that happens, either that person will reach out uh, through chat, through email, um, any other number of means of communication. And there will typically be a introduction saying, um, hey, let's talk, let's see what you're interested in so we can help you uh, make sure that you have the best fit and that you're you know, prepared to join us. And a lot of corporations will require on a social level that you have a willingness to use their tools, their out of game tools, and their means of communication beyond what is simply in the game. And here, I can tell you that nearly every corporation in EVE Online uses three things. They use some sort of vo voice communications, they'll use some sort of messaging app, and they will require uh, voice communication for any activities. And, and let me explain. So typically these are all one and the same, um, a lot of people will use Discord. They'll chat on Discord, they'll message each other in Discord, they'll keep their uh, support and training and messaging back and forth in Discord. Even Eve University has moved to Discord. And this allows them to set up on-demand voice channels, to set up on-demand chat channels, and to, to designate certain channels for to different topics. Like, so you might have a channel that's all about mission running. You might have a channel that's all about talking about um, mining and mining in different regions of space. There might be a new bro channel that's specifically for asking questions um, as day one new bros. And these are outside of the game resources. These are tools that are hosted in people's own Discord servers. And these are to provide a centralization of information, but they may have additional resources as well. They may have a forums web page. Uh, they may have a, um, a private website where they post all of their current fittings. Uh, they may have additional third-party tools. So those additional third-party tools beyond simple websites will typically fall into what we call, um, uh, you know, API tools. And the API, uh, or application programming interface, is a means of pulling information about characters and gameplay out of the game and viewing and presenting and modifying that information in a third-party tool. And the application interface for EVE Online is something called the EVE Swagger interface, or EASY. And ESI, as it's sometimes mistakenly called, but EASY is the EVE Swagger interface. And it allows corporations to develop third-party tools. Um, and there's a lot of platforms out there that allow them to do things like um, see when you're active, um, you know, what kind of taxes they're collecting from you in-game to see uh, what fleets that you're interested in joining, and to allow them to self-serve to you tools so that you can get the help that you need. And for example, our in in Nolsechne, Australian, our own ESI tools, um, we run a self-hosted tool called Seat. And when you are a new player, or if you're a recent recruit joining us, um, when we are recruiting, um, what you'll get is uh, typically the conversation will go, hey, we need you to get on our voice communication channels. And we have more than one. We have a mumble server for voice communications, and we have a Discord server where we predominantly do all of our chat and notifying people about events, fleets, pings, those kinds of things. And then there will be a request for you to sign your characters in and authorize them in our seat or in our authorization tool. And what that means is that you'll sign in through the EVE single sign-on. So you'll be 
you'll be prompted to go to a website link. You'll type in your user account name. The, the players in the alliance don't get to see this information. Um, this is a secure transaction that happens with EVE Online. But basically, you'll log in using your EVE Online username and account. If there's third-party verification, like you have a multi-factor auth tool uh, on your phone or on another device that you're using to generate random codes so that you can secure or log in, you'll enter in your six-digit code or your fingerprint or whatever it is that you're using to authenticate, and then you'll be allowed in. Um, and then from there, it'll ask you which character do you want to add. Now, most organized alliances and corporations in game will use seat or some other variation on these tools to say, let's take a look at how many characters you're bringing to the table, what their skills are, where your ships and your, your, your various assets are, and just to help understand how they can help you. Now, these tools like Seat will also typically have tabs in them as a web page that allow you to do things like see which services you're available to sign up for, which groups you can belong to. So larger organizations may have a group specifically for Intel. They may have a group specifically for stealth bombers. They may have a group for miners. They may have a group specifically for people who are interested in, mo in moon mining or in doing reactions. And it'll give you the opportunity to apply to those groups internally so that you can express your interest. And usually those apply buttons are tied to services links that kick off automations that do things like add certain Discord channels to your Discord view and give you roles that allow you to see things that you otherwise wouldn't have access to. And that largely cuts down on the administration time that the Alliance and Corporation have to spend, you know, manually clicking on things. So rather than saying, hey, I'm new in this Discord server, can you give me roles? And they have to find your name and right click and say, give this role, give this role, give this role. Um, you simply log into seat and you say, oh, moon mining, I want to join that. And then boom, one, two, three new channels show up. You get a new voice channel in your Discord. You get sent an email with an introduction saying, here's the things that um, you should have in terms of getting prepared. And here's where we moon mine. All of that information can be provided to you in automations that come to you really quickly. So these third party tools aren't just about security and reviewing the details of your character to make sure you're not a spy or something to that effect. In a large way, it's about cutting down on the administration time that players, especially the leaders of an organization, have to spend administrating their own work so rather than getting stuck without an undock button in the sense that they end up spending all their time administering the running of the corporation or the alliance, that they too can spend the time logging into play and organizing and planning fleets and doing the things they really want to be doing rather than just the constant day-to-day handholding that's required to run an alliance. So it's about cutting down that overhead for them. And it is also useful as an intelligence tool to know when somebody is saying they're one thing and actually pretending to be another or are actually another and um, be able to identify people who, you know, have joined your corporation and said, yeah, we're, we're here, we're going to do this. And then they never show up for anything. And sometimes that's an opportunity to reach out and have a conversation about, you know, what is it that you're not getting that you're not logging in? What is it that we can do to help you enjoy this game more? And it's an opportunity to open a conversation and a discussion. Whereas those third party tools, um, if without them, there's a, there's, a, there's a dearth of information available to the Alliance leaders when they're dealing with people on a, on a day by day basis or what the recruitment and training officers within a corporation are gonna do. And if it sounds an awful lot like this sounds like a real business running in the real world, um, I can tell you that there's a lot of people that have been hired to real world positions um, working in actual companies from the skills that they've developed running corporations and alliances and even online and, and setting up things like logistics. And a lot of the people who do these things on a volunteer basis, because everybody who plays this game is a volunteer. None of us are getting paid to play Eve if we don't work for CCP. Um, all of those people are doing these plannings and these setups of the third party program to develop these tools as a volunteer effort. And uh, many of these people are indeed experts in these things in their real world lives, in their day roles and the jobs that they, that they do. So it is not at all uh, surprising 
to find just an insane level of dedication and volunteer hours being given to this game. Now, what's the what are the barriers for you if you're a new player joining a corporation and you're uncomfortable with the idea of being on voice with somebody? And there's any number of reasons why you may be uncomfortable being on voice with people. Um, maybe you have a speech impediment. Maybe you have problems with um, uh, dysphoria. Maybe you are dealing with um, mental health issues or you're in a very loud environment. Maybe you're mute. Maybe you don't You have the ability to speak. There are corporations in EVE Online um, that cater almost exclusively to people with uh, disabilities. There are, there's a whole community of players who are mute, and it, it makes sense for them to be using Discord and other out-of-game tools because it allows them to communicate extraneously even when they're not playing the game. It also allows them to keep their chat in a separate window so that it's not taking up space in their real estate. You can see right now, I actually have my chat window minimized because if I'm not looking at local or I'm not looking at my recruitment channels, I am I want that out of my space. I want as little clutter on my screen as possible. And believe it or not, there are people who play EVE Online who are blind, like legally blind. Um, so there's, there's just an incredible... Um, variety of options as new players looking to join corporations in EVE. Now, if there's things about the process that seem intimidating to you in the sense of, does joining a corporation mean that you will have to use Discord or Mumble or TeamSpeak or other tools? Um, yes, it does, typically. And many corporations simply will not take you if you're not willing to um, have a microphone and be on communications. Even if you don't speak yourself, even if it's just that you're shy about the sound of your voice, um, in many cases, they need you to be able to hear them talking so that if you're participating in a combat fleet, when the FC says, align to this gate and jump, or says, says to you, get to this gate, but wait there and don't jump until I say go, if you don't hear them talking, you're flying blind. 90% of the communication that's happening about what's going on with the fleet, its purpose, who your targets are, where you're supposed to be going, you lose all of that exposure and all of that information if you're not listening on comms when it's going down. So your ability to be effective and to um, be a contributing member of the corporation often relies on voice communication even if you're choosing to communicate outwardly through chat, like if you're typing in fleet chat while the FC is talking. Um, the other side of that, however, is that joining a Discord, uh, joining a Slack channel, talking on, on communications or comms, all of these extraneous communications are also a big part of building the culture of your corporation and developing a group of friends with whom you regularly communicate. And the reason why people stay with this game isn't that the mechanics of the game itself are spectacular. They're not. Um, even if it's uh, that the aesthetics of the game are, aren't sufficient by themselves to hold people, they're not. There's the people stay with this game because the community is amazing and the people are wonderful and people who are absolute sworn enemies in game will routinely go for beers with one another when they get the chance to meet in the real world, um, you know, in the pre COVID era, as it were. And it is an incredibly supportive, incredibly gracious, incredibly open community. And I promise you, there is a corporation for you in EVE. Now, what are the benefits of joining corporations? There's a few things. You gain the support and training and mentorship of other players who've seen it and done it. And this doesn't necessarily need to be somebody who's some salty old bro who's been playing the game for a long time or some veteran player who has built up certain um, prejudices or biases about how the game should be played or anything of that nature. It doesn't mean that you're going to be running into groups of toxic players either. It doesn't mean that there aren't groups of toxic players in EVE. It just means that they're the minority. Um, you're, what you're going to find is that sometimes the person who's teaching you knows just 10% more than you do, but that they're learning from somebody who knows more than them. And that's often how information trickles down is that either you're getting formal teaching from somebody who knows a lot 
or you may have one or two reliable sources of information. Maybe I'm somebody you communicate with regularly. You're here watching this YouTube video. Um, and sometimes it means that you're gaining the, the benefit of knowledge of people who've been playing the game for a decade and more. And that's powerful because having somebody who's been through the same experiences as you and knows what to recommend so that you don't run into the same pitfalls that they encountered is a huge part of upskilling in this game and developing your soft skills as a player, but also knowing how to train your character's hard skills and, and develop, you know, training paths to the types of ships that will empower the gameplay that you want. Now, the other side of that is that within the game, there are certain explicit benefits. Um, many corporations offer ship replacement policy, meaning if you lose a ship, rather than having to spend the money to buy a new one, they'll just replace it for you. Sometimes their ship replacement policy is just for the hull, and sometimes they hand out fitted ships. Also, many corporations will provide handout ships for fleets. They're called handout fleets where the corporation or the leadership for the corporation will go through the vested interest and effort to build a fleet or purchase a fleet of fully built ships and simply give you a ship to use for the purposes of the fleet. And when you're done the fleet, you give it back. If the ship wasn't destroyed, you're better off. And you also gain the benefit of intelligence channels where people can say, hey, there's a hostile nearby, you get greater awareness and greater protection from numbers so that if somebody hostile does fly through your space, uh, you can band together and form a response to push them off. Um, there's, there's a number of benefits. It's not just the training. It's not just the support and camaraderie of flying with other players. It's not just the intrinsic um, economic benefits of, of not having to constantly be buying replacement ships. Um, there's other benefits as well in the sense that um, often, if you're able to buy things from your corporation or from corporate or alliance structures, you're often buying them at a lower taxation rate than what you would pay if you were doing the same transactions in HiSec. Um, if it's a, a heavily industrialized alliance or, or a group that does a lot of building and seeding of market, often you have access to transportation routes and jump freighter routes that cost much less than if you had to pay for a public service. Um, my own group, Nulsa Chennai Shalupin, for example, we have routine daily trips of jump freighters to and from Jita and major markets so that we can get the ships and material that we need when we need it for the fleets that we want to run. So there's a, there's a host of benefits to joining a corporation. I can tell you right now that if you asked me, should I join a corporation in Evil 9? Not should I join a specific corporation, but should I join a corporation in Evil 9? My answer will always be a resounding yes. Even if you're somebody who prefers to play alone, simply having the soft social connections to build relationships with people to whom you can sell, from whom you can buy, uh, with whom you can establish a, a safety net of protection uh, from hostile threats, there's, there's just so many reasons to join a corporation that I honestly, in all the years I've been playing EVE, can count on one hand and not use all my fingers the number of people I know who play completely solo. And those few people I know who do play almost entirely solo, um, they are still not operating in a vacuum because the things that they make, they sell to other players. Uh, the actions of other players in the market adjust the cost of, of the things that they buy and sell. So no one's working in a vacuum. EVE Online is a social game because it is a sandbox. Everybody exists in the same shard. We're all in this together. And one of the best ways to get ahead is to join a corporation. So if you're a new player and you've been waffling on whether or not you should join a corporation, go to the agency window, click on corporate dashboard, go to recruitment, Find a corporation that's within the, the parameters you're looking for, talk to their CEO or, or recruiting person, and apply to join after you've opened that initial conversation. And definitely, I, I strongly encourage you to join a corporation. And if you the first corporation you join isn't a good fit, either because they're too different from you in terms of their gameplay goals, or maybe you don't like the conversations that they have on their comms, or they're, you know, too serious or too relaxed or 
too mature, or too immature, whatever the case may be, you will eventually find a fit with a corporation that's going to feel like a circle of friends or even maybe as close as a family. Because this game is full of some of the most awesome people I've ever met. And it would be a real shame if you didn't engage in the community in a more meaningful way. Thanks, everybody. I'm Jarius Doctor. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below, and I look forward to your feedback. Thank you.